Last week I looked at one of two new launches from AMD, this is the Radeon RX 7700 XT. Performance was good, especially in 1440p, but the pricing is a little bit questionable. For an extra £50, if you're willing to save up, you can get the 7800 XT, which is a 16GB Big Brother. This is the Power Color Hellhound edition that we've got, sent out by Scan. They are one of the biggest UK retailers that sell anything and everything for components, some pro audio and visual gear on there as well. I'll leave them linked down below. So in this video, we're doing an unboxing and an overview of this card, get it into the benchmarking system and see what kind of figures that we get from it. And then at the very end, I'll tell you about some plans that I've got for some comparisons with the previous gen. As I mentioned, this is the Hellhound edition from Power Color. There's a couple of other ones that I've seen at the same price, which is the Sapphire Pulse. I think there's an XFX one as well. Um, all the others seem to be over 500 pounds or dollars. So this is certainly one of the more affordable ones in that kind of lineup. If you want to pause and read the back of the box, you can do. I'll tell you as we go throughout the video though. So again, like the 7700 XT, this has got 3,840 stream processors. In terms of clocks, you've got two modes on this card. You've basically got a dual BIOS. You can do an OC and there's also a silent mode on there as well. Opening it up, we have got some real thick foam like we saw on the 7700 XT. The card itself, certainly a bit bigger than the last one. And I'm gonna assume, again, there's gonna be nothing else in the box. Nope. Okay, so very simple unboxing for this one. No messing about for this card, straight into it. Anti-static bags, anything we've got really to talk about in terms of unboxing experience, but it is more an affordable card, so you've got to take that into consideration. In terms of design, very different from the other cards that we've looked at so far. That's the front on. We've got a triple fan on this one. We've got two 90 mil fans and there's one 80 in the middle. Cooler design is pretty drastically different over the other cars that we've looked at so far. So we've got the fighter in the middle, 7700 XT, then we've got a Red Devil on the bottom, which is a 6800 XT. So in terms of performance, these are the two that will be going against each other more than the 7700 XT. In terms of measurements, the Hellhound is 332 mil long, 147 high and then 50 mil thick, so two and a half slots. Let's pop these back and then have a little bit of a better look. So like I mentioned, you've got the triple fans. There is an RGB effect on these because you've got the clear blades. It by default set to blue as it kind of matches the accents on the Hellhound logo there. Personally, I'm not that big of a fan of the color straight out of the box. I'm hoping that we can change it in the power color software. Really nice heatsink design like we saw in the last cards. This one's got eight heat pipes though over the five that we saw on the 7700 XT. Although it is obviously a higher spec card, so that's to be expected. We've got two PCIe eight pins for power. We saw the same with the 7700 XT last week as well. So again, recommended spec 750 watts for your power supply. Nothing too crazy for this kind of card. To the left of those, there's also an LED switch, so you can easily turn those on or off if you fancy it. it. Does seem that there are three different settings on there, so maybe we've got a couple of different defaults, so we shall see what they are when we turn it on. In terms of the back plate, just a satin back plate for this model, nothing really to write home about. How how logo on the end, and there's some just open cutouts for some airflow to get through. On the far left hand side we have got the BIOS switch so you can go from the overclock to silent profile. By default the switch is set to OC which gives you a clock of 2520. Then if you switch it over to silent you get a clock of 2430. So you do sacrifice a little bit of clock speed for the silence but of course it's up to you whether you want to do it or not. I have found these coolers to be fairly quiet anyway though and they generally don't spin under 60 degrees anyway so it may be the case that you never need to switch it over anyway. On the end, you can just see some of the heat pipes that we've got on the cooler. There's a couple of screw points if you want to add an anti-sag bracket. Then at the other end, we've got our display outputs. So we've got a three display port, which are 2.1, and we've got one HDMI, which is also 2.1. Then in terms of resolution, that's up to four monitors, and then 8K, so 7,680 by 4,320. Any combination up to that. Other little things to note, sandwiched in there somewhere, we've got a 9 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 Dr. Moss VRM design. Bit of a mouthful, but that basically means you've got a better thermal performance and also a better stability on the card as well. So now let's get this into our system, see how it performs and take a look at the LED lighting. So the graphics card test bench is an Intel 12900K, that's at stock on the Asus Z690 Hero. We've got 32 gigabytes of Kingston Fury RGB, that's a 5600 megahertz. Then we've got the OS running from a Seagate Fire Cooler 530, one terabyte. Cooling is the Corsa H170i Elite LCD, and then it's all contained in the Fantex Etho 2 Pro case. First up, we're going to do Starfield. As you can see, I've got a 1440p setting here. This is a high preset with motion blur and resync off. 
Just as a little bit of a heads up, I am recording this on OBS, so that will affect our frames just by maybe three or four. Just take that into consideration. I'm using a section from the intro of this game as well, so if you want to stay completely spoiler free, then do jump to the next benchmark, because we're now going to start and see how we get on. So the section I'm using for this game is just when the pirates land. I've actually gone up to um, a little bit of a higher bit in the terms of, or in an attempt rather, to flank. Um, but we're currently with a high sitting around 65 frames. There's a lot of intense particles and things going on there though. Um, they seem to be coming off the other side of the ship, so let's get down there. Actually awful at shooting in this game. Still sat around 60 frames. We did see a round the same actually with the 7700 XT, but I also mentioned in that video that this game is very poorly optimized at the moment and does need a lot of work. So that might be something that we'll see improve in time. So playing the same settings on the 7700 XT gave us around 59 to 60 frames at a constant. We're now about 63, so slightly more. Um, but of course we'll talk about the price differences and things when I do some comparisons. Console frames, if you're happy with those, but you're gonna certainly have to turn your settings down if you're gonna to want to get anywhere near 120 high fresh rate monitor, because quite frankly, this ain't cutting it. On to Crisis Remastered again, 1440p using a high preset. I do have ray tracing on just to see what we're gonna get with it, but I will turn it off because I know not everyone's fussed about it. I'm currently at about 103 frames. Um, very much spray and pray for this game. I'm not that good at this one. 90 frames, 87, and now turning ray tracing off for up to 129, 134. Damn, it's a lot higher than I was expecting. Let's see if we can actually do a little bit more. 150 frames. Grenade, it's someone's not got great accuracy there. I probably threw that. <laughs> Um, 130 frames, still sticking around 130, which is always good to see. Like I said, not everyone likes to use ray tracing, so those valuable FPS can be saved if you're willing to... Oh, so close to getting past that without actually dying. If you're willing to turn that off, you can give yourself a nice jump by about 40 frames. Very good. Let's try maybe Dirt 5 next. On to Dirt 5, we don't have any frame view for this game, but we do have a built-in benchmark which we'll use instead, so we'll still get our results and things at the end. Everything is set to high, and we also have VSync off, and we'll go out and then down to our built-in benchmark and see what kind of figures we get. So 134.5 for Dirt 5. I was actually expecting around high 120, so I'm actually impressed with uh, the 135. A little bit of a weird dip there with the 18.8 as a minimum but I think that's probably the game because we did see that on the last card as well over the hardware. Very good 1% low there as well, 112.2. Very pleasantly surprised, actually. So for our next game, maybe we'll do Apex Legends. And then the settings for Apex Legends, everything again is turned up to high with the exception of texture filtering, also the streaming budget, and then the spot shadow detail, which is on kind of medium for those two. So now we've got a preset run that I do just to see what kind of frames we get. We're sitting well above 200 though at the moment, which is always promising. We have this one here. And then, it's not very scientific, but it's consistent. So 142, little drop there. And then 211, back up to straight away. So 1% low, 95. Not too bad for 1% low though. This isn't obviously the most demanding game that we're going to try, but it can be a little bit finicky for some cards I've seen. But for this one, the 7800 XT is certainly not having any issues. Much like Starfield, Cyberpunk can be one of those hit or miss games. For this one, I'm going to run a custom preset, which is going to be a ray tracing medium setting, turning off FSR to begin with and then seeing what benefit we do see by turning it on. Already this doesn't feel very nice. 33 frames, 32. This is one of those ones that definitely needs some kind of help by FSR, um, DLSS, and thing like that. So I'm not going to hang around too long playing without putting on one of those settings. So let's firstly try FSR. We'll do a balance preset to begin with, 0.8. Now bear in mind this is ray trace as well, which is the crippling factor for Cyberpunk. 
and we have almost doubled our frames so not too shabby for a little bit of a first play now of course ray tracing in this game is beautiful there's no doubt about it but it is at the sacrifice of your frames so if we do go down to the ray tracing settings and then just turn this off and then we'll apply that so we're going from about 55 frames with using fsr to 115 a dramatic jump with fsr even if you didn't want to use it for some reason even though you've you know casually got a 7800x installed even by just turning ray tracing off so around 90 frames now just from that one setting being disabled ray tracing really is the straw that broke the camel's back in terms of performance in cyberpunk so if you're willing to turn off that ray tracing you can get a real nice doubling in your frames especially if you're going to use fsr as well so high no ray tracing and then using fsr on balance you're going to get around 125 130 frames of course you can take that balance preset on fsr and put it to performance but i do like balance because you get a nice blend of quality and also frames so now let's move on to our last game and then we'll do a little conclusion on to Far Cry 6 and we've got everything turned to high for this one again. We do have motion blur off because it's trash. And then we have anti-aliasing and TAA. This one's got a nice built-in benchmark so we're going to run that for consistency. I'm very curious about this benchmark because it's usually the one that tells me the most about the performance. Average frames, we got 120. I was actually expecting a little bit more to be perfectly honest. So it's certainly doing better in some games than others. So there's more to dive into, especially when I do some more comparison videos in the future. But initially, maximum FPS 147. So like I said before, bring your settings down a little bit. You can touch on that 144 hertz for a high refresh monitor. Minimum frames 36. That dip we get every time. I'm not sure what it is. Um, but it always appears in every graph if you go back on other videos you'll see it there as well so it's nothing to do with the card itself it's just the game a bit strange but it is what it is but performance wise it's certainly doing better in some games than others so i think there's a little bit more we need to unravel about this card but now let's go on to a little conclusion and i'll give you my overall thoughts performance for the 7800 xt went as i expected it a little bit faster than the 7700 xt is quite on par with the 4070 We'll be doing a comparison video for that as well, so get subscribed and do the bow so you don't miss that. In terms of thermal performance, we saw a high hotspot of 84 degrees on this card. The room was 24 at the time that I recorded that as well, so a perfect 60, well rounded. The 7700 XT was a little bit warmer, but the room was warmer as well, so it all evens out there roughly on par in terms of thermals. I've not seen any coil wine with this card either, something that's often asked about as well on my videos, so great to see and also to tell you that there's none on this one the leds on the card i think are going to be very marmite you're going to love them or hate them i've warmed to the purple on this card not too much of a fan of the blue to be perfectly honest if it was a bit of a darker blue like the, on my set then i'd be happy with that but I'm not really a fan of the lighter blue that's on there like i said this is one of the most affordable 7800 xts in the lineup so there are going to be some sacrifices and rgb leds are one of them on this card it certainly does have the function over form though performance wise very good figures like i said some games are a little bit better than others starfield though is obviously one that needs to be heavily optimized in the first place as i mentioned in the 7700 xt video it doesn't really make that much sense to go for 4k with this card certainly something you're going to want to spend a little bit more money on if you're going to want to push that because you're going to need a 4k monitor expensive as they are and then if you want to go high refresh rate it's even more expense on top and then you're gonna to have to turn your settings down to really get that smooth frame rate and then push all those pixels as well so it's a lot to ask for for this kind of card so i think that's something that's going to be best saved for a 7900 xt or a 4070 ti i think that's it for this video so thank you all for watching a little bit more of an ad lib one again like the last video but i want to get these out for you as soon as i can obviously people are going to be looking up these cars to see how they perform so hopefully this video was informative for that so thank you all for watching hope you enjoyed it thank you for scan for sending this out for me to look at I'll leave the links in the description box below if you want to pick one up and I'll see you all in the next one.